Hi, I'm Keith Kessler. I'm a psychoanalyst and psychiatrist in Austin, Texas. Today what I want to do is to talk about inflammation and its effect on our brain. In particular, its effect on our mood, depression, and anxiety. This is a significant issue in that depression is the second leading cause of disability worldwide. Some 25% of Americans suffer from depression and 20% from anxiety. And in fact, the annual cost for antidepressant medication alone is over $2 billion a year. So not only do we want to decrease the need for antidepressant medication, but also to improve the overall quality of our life. So with inflammation, our brains are literally on fire. It affects our quality of life. It affects our ability to connect and to interact with one another and to be productive in our lives. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is the body's way of protecting us from invasion, invasion of viruses, bacteria, and also to a response to irritants, lack of exercise, chronic stress, and consumption of certain foods. And what happens is, is that there are inflammatory hormones that are released by the body, in particular cytokines, and they cause the white blood cells to migrate to the area of invasion or infection and help the body to be able to fight it off. And what we see is a diverse array of both physical but also psychological responses to this inflammation. In particular, what we see is that the cytokines can cross in to the blood-brain barrier, that is, to go into the brain, and then have effects on the hypothalamus. It's an area of the brain that's responsible for regulation of mood. And so again, when we see this elevation in cytokines with an inflammation, we then see effects on mood cellular inflammation, that is inflammation at the level of the cells. And this is below the perception of pain. This is also mediated by cytokines and arachidonic acid, that is omega-6, which is found in some cooking oils, vegetable oils. And in fact, studies have shown a very clear correlation between inflammation and depression. When we study people with, with depression, we find that they have increased levels of cytokines, that is these inflammatory hormones, in their brain. We've seen that when people are given interferon to treat hepatitis C, that they end up getting psychiatric illnesses, including depression or even psychosis, as a direct result of the interferon, again, a type of cytokine. Finally, cytokines have been shown to decrease the levels in the brain of serotonin, a very necessary neurotransmitter to help with a sense of psychic well-being. So clearly, we see this role of inflammation in chronic illnesses, and then finally too in the effects downstream with depression and anxiety. Now what we see is a role of inflammation in most of the chronic illnesses, such as obesity, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, that is high blood pressure, arthritis, dementia, cancer, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and depression and anxiety. Interestingly, what is seen is depression and anxiety as a component, a symptom of each of these chronic illnesses. We see with chronic pain that people will end up getting depressed. We see with depression that people have difficulty with perception of pain. So there's this feedback loop between these chronic illnesses and ultimately what we experience as depression or anxiety. What can we do about it? Alterations of lifestyle, including diet, have shown to decrease the symptoms of depression and a sense of psychic well-being. Omega-3 fatty acids found in fish has shown to decrease the symptoms of depression. Turmeric is a spice used in Ayurvedic medicine, but also too in cooking, and has shown significant anti-inflammatory properties. Stress reduction, such as yoga, meditation, a social network, and psychotherapy a non-inflammatory diet, which I will go into in a subsequent video, optimized vitamin D, dietary supplements such as B-complexes and folic acid, exercise some 30 minutes a day has also shown a significant improvement in overall well-being and symptoms of depression. Thank you very much for listening to this. I hope I've done a pretty good job of giving an overview regarding inflammation and its effect on our mood. And in subsequent videos, I would like to go into the details of many of these points that I've brought up. Take a look at the website down below, the email listed down below, and let me know what you think of this video. 
I'd also like you to send me some ideas for subsequent videos that you'd be interested in, and I do appreciate you listening. Thank you very much, and take care.